Sanskrit. Another one of our team and IOC drivers, Karthik, with navigator Rajiv. And they make quite a badass, should I say, couple. And here comes Rajiv and Karthik. Oops. Unfortunately, we can't drive these vehicles legally on the roads during the monsoon days. Otherwise, it would have been fun. These guys have to go up on those cones, between the cones. Rajiv is pulling out the winch and tying it to an anchor point. As I mentioned earlier, every single move counts. So even if the winch is used in the wrong fashion, points will be deducted. <laughs> I guess they have to come down now. Same obstacle where the previous vehicle toppled, the Vixas. And unfortunately I was not there to see how it toppled, what exactly went wrong. Let's see what happens here. Bunting ke us par. Coming back 
down. Stage, the winch is being pulled out by the navigator and the winch is to be tied with the JCB down there. Unfortunately guys, it's kind of really hard to catch hold of any of the RFC drivers today for a quick chat. But uh, I will try and uh, give you a detailed uh, description of what exactly an RFC vehicle is made of. I might not be able to give you the exact technical specifications because of my limited know-how. But uh, yeah, I'll uh, jump straight right into it and let me try and explain to you as to why these RFC vehicles are capable of handling so much of uh, abuse and so much of uh, difficulties like you saw in the videos that I was just showing you and uh, I mean these things are like really 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 well built and uh, precisely why these vehicles are also not street legal but yeah, it's fun. As I showed you earlier, this is Eric's vehicle and he just finished his second obstacle wherein a small issue happened. The winch length turned out to be limited. Not because of the winch length actually being limited but because of the distance of the vehicle from the anchor point. I mean, he could have just probably come closer uh, to the anchor point and that would not, not, that not have been an issue. But yeah, moving on. Not sure if these are Dana 45s or Dana 60s, but for sure these are portal axles. And essentially in portal axles, the gearing, the main gearing is here, which is connected to the axle shaft through another set of gearing up top. As the suspension setup, you've got ORI struts. There's something very unique about them which you notice that uh, 
there are no independent springs and shocks but this one whole thing works as a unit so you do not need to have shocks separately and springs separately or even coilovers and as it turns out majority of the rfc drivers are currently using this setup ori struts and uh, the steering setup is uh, these are heim joints and it's a completely hydraulic setup it just works best when it comes to rock crawling and stuff unlike the traditional uh, track and pinion forget about track and pinion actually but unlike the traditional steering box steering setups which even i happen to have on my uh, off road vehicle but uh, that turns out to have a lot of play after a couple of uh, extreme off road uh, competitions but this one seems to be just behaving fine that's the rear end and there are a few must haves on an rfc vehicle without which your vehicle might not even or will not even pass the scrutiny these are the ladders grip ladders this is the i'm not sure what you call it a uh, very large sized shovel or anchor actually an anchor so as you saw in some of the previous shots how the anchor is actually used in case there is no stable anchor point available while doing an obstacle and you have a point wherein you can dig this thing in then you can tie your vehicle to the knot there uh, using a winch and then just engage the winch and pull yourself so the shape of this thing the anchor is designed in such a way the more you pull the more this will dig in the ground tires not much uh, introduction needed as i mentioned earlier the entire thing is practically a cage with some sheet metal on top bolted or welded now i'm going to take you inside the jeep sorry inside the vehicle this is clearly not a jeep i mean all of this is a first for me can you just give me a quick explanation of what each of these things do i mean yeah. locker i know but yeah. still yeah this is a front locker uh huh if you on it okay basically to keep moving pull it out you pull it out okay 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 and then it, uh, while doing the winding we must uh, off the press pull okay 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 go go in ha then we will go in so we go the next out and this is the rear wing setup same as the front wing also okay uh, so for example once you have done the free spool and the guy the co driver yeah, has yeah fixed it on the anchor, anchor then you press this in button then you, okay uh, and uh, release the free spool okay then he engages Understood. So that uh, then we drive also. Okay. We yeah. climb the. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Same as perfect. Perfect. Same as in the rear, rear winch. Yeah, we are using uh, front winch. It's a new new one. Uh, okay. New brand. That's one. Good This winch. is not come up. No, no. It's not come up. Okay. okay. It's a good winch. Good winch. Okay. And in the rear we are using dual winch, double motor. Okay. Yeah, okay. Front we are using the double motor, good winch. It's a new one, and I record it from Germany. I so see. So while we coming for the charge. Okay. What engine is this running? Currently, Innova petrol. 2.7. Yeah. Ah. This guy. That's a fire extinguisher. That's a must-have again in any of the competition vehicles, just in case of a fire. Huh. But you will have to recall all of this, man. How do you remember? Fan, fan, air compressor, bike. Right indicator, left indicator. Do you like memorize this or what? Yeah. <laughs> I think I saw Eric's vehicle. I mean, at least everything was written up front. Mm. He spent a lot of money. 
question Dr. Challa to you is Tell me the secret sauce for driving and uh, participating with one cylinder <laughs> So we started, we started with a good car uh-huh. We finished uh, day 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 very well uh-huh. uh, What happened yesterday on day 6 uh-huh. was that 3 cylinders stopped firing okay. I think the turbo blew and the injectors came off So we were not able to finish two stages because of loss of power okay uh, but otherwise it was good we were in position four overall and only four points before the person ahead of us right and only 29 points to second place okay so that's what we were gunning for but wow. when we started yesterday the first stage we did the fastest time we got 100 okay. and stage two we were all almost done when the turbo and all blew up Okay. Hence had no power, we had to kind of winch ourselves in, but you get your penalties because the hook is now and the strap, the hook, the dampener are all outside. Mm-hmm. So you get your penalties, mm-hmm. making my score zero. But don't they give you like plus points for driving on one cylinder? No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they don't. So, so it was a good, crazy, crazy type. And I think that for you, this was a last minute decision for this year's RFC? Yes, we decided on Friday that I should drive and I came here on Saturday and I drove on Sunday and okay. I thought this was a petrol car but turns out that it's a diesel car. Don't tell me you didn't know it's a diesel. I had no idea that it was a diesel car. <laughs> so you were not even able to practice for any of the... No, last time I drove was last year RFC, sitting in a jeep. Uh-huh. Uh, this time was on Saturday from the hotel to scrutiny and in uh-huh. scrutiny they told me that it's a diesel car. <laughs> Anyway, we did well. I think the car has a lot of functions. It has a it has hmm. a rear wheel steer. You can operate the rear wheel steer from here, left and right. Okay. And then this is the steer, rear steer centering. And then it has a, a front locker, rear locker. Okay. You have a front free spool, rear free spool. Okay. And out. And then you have our, uh, the fan controls, indicators, the headlights. I don't know what these two still are. Uh, <laughs> and this happens to be a fan, the air compressor, indicator, wiper, additional wiper, LED rear, LED front, headlights, tail lights. I still don't know what this is. And this is a switch starter. And well, at least you know all of these switches. Yeah, that was, that, at least that part I'm good. <laughs> and these are, of course, the. Winch Kill switches. Achha, no, these are what? This this is the front winch cutoff, rear winch cutoff. This is the car engine cutoff. Okay, in case of a topple or whatever you need to, yeah. whenever you need to kill the engine. Yes. Oh, okay. And then of course we have a, head, a cabin light which is not working. <laughs> That's. It that has a nice rear steer. There's nice. a lot of things to get used to. Okay. Uh, sometimes I drive with my leg. I'm surprised that. This thing, uh, you guys are using this, but I've heard these kinds of things are not really considered safe for the driver's thumb as such when you're driving. So, no, I find it very comfortable. I find it very, very, very comfortable. Or is it because of the fact that it's a hydraulic steering, uh, the impact on the steering doesn't really come as a jerk, is it so? Uh, No, yes. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference because I've always driven a hydraulic steering. Because I remember, like, I have a steering box set up, and in case of uh, my one of the tires hitting the rock, the steering suddenly jerks towards the other direction. Does it happen in these kinds of... No, again, like I said, I've never driven a regular steering too. Oh, you've always been on the hydraulic steering. This car has a rear steering also. Okay. That operates with this one. Understood, so understood. I'm on the gear, so you see me. Right, 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 front, right, left, rear, to turn. I can go crab, we call it a crab, right? Or crab. Uh-huh. So that all operates with these two. Just this one, not this one. I thought it's connected, like when you turn right, the rear nope. steering is in the opposite direction no, no, automatically. Right. That's the final climb. <laughs> <laughs> Up the truck. Are you sure you can go through it with one cylinder? I'm pretty certain. <laughs> In the heart of the rainforests where man and machine reunite, 
The rainforest challenge leaves an indelible mark on our souls. As the engines quiet and the dust settles, we're left with memories that breathe life into our spirits. We become a part of brotherhood that defies limits, celebrates passion, and cherishes the beauty of untouched wilderness. The triumphs and challenges faced together forge an unbreakable bond, reminding us that beyond the thrill of adventure, it is the human connection that truly makes the RFC a journey of a lifetime. Until we meet again, may the spirit of RFC live on in our hearts.